So we need to talk about the Divi theme. There was a time when the Divi theme was the best page builder for WordPress. Back in 2016, Divi introduced the first ever visual page builder. It dominated the WordPress market. Agencies were building everything with it, portfolios, business sites, e-commerce stores, you name it. Divi was everywhere. But over the years, things started to slowly change for Divi. New builders came out, Elementor, Bricks, Oxygen, and they were faster, lighter, and built on newer technology. Meanwhile, Divi started to feel a little outdated. The Divi builder slowed down, Divi shortcodes became a problem, and honestly, it just did not keep up with the pace of the industry. So at this point, Elegant Themes had to make a choice. Divi made a bold move. Instead of patching up the old version, they decided to rebuild the entire theme from scratch. And now, after years of development, we finally have the Divi 5.0 beta. Now, this is not just an update. Divi rebuilt their entire theme using a different framework. Now, here's the real question. Can Divi retake the reins and be the number one best page builder again? Well, maybe, right? So in this video, I'm going to go through each section, talk about what I like and what I don't like. And well, let's just get into it. All right, so this is elegantthemes.com. Now there is a link to this website in the video description. You can go ahead and access Divi 5. Now you can try Divi 5 completely for free. So on their website, if you go over here to Divi and click on Divi 5, you can actually try the live demo. So you can click on this and then you can actually try Divi for free on their website. Now, if you decide to use Divi, it's really simple to install it on your website. All you gotta do is go to the account after you've purchased the product. And right here, you'll see you have access to Divi 5 beta. So here you can go ahead and download the beta and upload it to your WordPress website. So this is the Divi dashboard, and this is where you can just get a quick overview about your website. So here they have documentation that you can access. They have support, and I'll be honest, their support with Divi is actually useful. I know many people who have used support with WordPress companies. It's pretty bad, but with elegant themes, they're actually quite good. Uh, here we have the Divi Quick Sites. Now you can actually generate a new website with AI and their AI is actually really good as well. And also you can migrate your old website to Divi 5. So if you're running Divi 4, which is their old builder, you can actually migrate your entire website to Divi 5 and that is a completely different framework. That's really cool they offer this for their customers. Now scrolling down over here, if I click on Divi 5 Migrator, Elegant Themes will detect if you are using an old version of Divi and they will automatically migrate it to a new website if you choose to you know, select that option. Next, let's click on the theme options. Now, I think I speak for everybody watching this video who used to use Divi or is using it now. I have never used the Divi theme options. I run a web design agency using Divi and uh, I don't really use any of these options. Now, the reason why many people don't is because Divi was created back in a time where a lot of plugins were not available and these options didn't exist. So uh, for example, like the ad section, you can choose to have an ad banner, but today there's plugins that can do this. So there's really no use for a lot of these options. Also in the general section, you'll see that you can change the sidebar to the right or left side, but Divi already has a theme builder where you can place the sidebar anywhere you want. So yeah, I felt like Divi just didn't really know what to do with these options and it just kept them here for historical reasons. But um, yeah, it's nice that they have them, but I think Elegant Themes just probably didn't know what to do with them because they don't want to get rid of them, but they also don't want to like advertise them. The next option is the theme builder. Now the Divi theme builder, I think is probably the best theme builder out in the industry. It just makes things really simple to work with. So we'll come back to the Divi theme builder a little bit later. So next let's go ahead and talk about the more important things like the page builder. So over here under uh, pages, I'll go ahead and create a new page. Now to actually turn on the Divi Builder, all you gotta do is just click on use Divi Builder. Now you guys know me by now. I'm brutally honest when I gave reviews, I don't hold anything back. So I'm going to critique what I like about Divi and what I do not like about Divi. So let's get into it. So this is the Divi Builder. Now, before we actually jump into the actual building experience, there's some really cool options that you can do to decorate your building experience. So the first thing is you can change this to light mode to dark mode, which makes it, you know, makes it feel more professional. And over here under the builder settings, if we scroll down, you're gonna see that we can change the color scheme. So we have blue, we got purple, we got green, and we also have red and orange. I do like this green. I think that's a lot easier to see. Also right here, we can turn the admin bar on. So here you can now see the actual WordPress uh, admin here at the top, okay? So let's go ahead and close this and I'm gonna use this color scheme for the remainder of this review. Okay, so let's get into this. Now, right here you have this add new row section and this will add a row inside of this section. So here you have a huge variety of different rows you can insert. You got equal columns, multi-row, multi-column, and then we got these really wacky looking ones that you can insert. Uh, but let's just keep this simple, all right? Let's just insert a two column row 
And boom, boom, right away we have two pop-ups. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't like the idea of pop-ups just popping up when you're building your websites. It's like uh, Castlevania 2 when you are walking around and that annoying notice comes when it turns from night to day. To kind of add insult to injury here is I can't move this around. So if you're working on your website and you have something behind this, you really can't see what you're working on because you have this this uh, pop-up and we can't move it anywhere. So I think maybe Elgin Themes can uh, move this somewhere else in the future or just give users the ability to move this. But uh, let's go ahead and just stick with the basics. So let's go ahead and throw in a heading text. Now, one thing also that I'm going to critique here is uh, they should actually rearrange these elements into the most frequently used at the top and then add elements that people do not use at the bottom. For example, we have audio here. Does anyone ever use the audio module? I mean, probably nobody. I mean, maybe like very few people. And if we scroll down here at the way bottom, we have text. And text is probably gonna be one of the most common elements people use. So they should probably add the most important models here at the top and not focus on alphabetical order. But uh, let's go ahead and just find the heading. So here we can search for a module, we'll put heading insert heading and then here we have the heading options now really quick i was a little critical about this earlier but you can actually move this so over here under the builder settings if we go to settings modal default position we can place this on the right sidebar the left sidebar uh, last used position or floating minimum size so i'm going to put this on the right sidebar so that'll kind of fix the pop-up issue that we had but let's go ahead and close this now, really quick, there is also one thing I do want to talk about with elements. They have way too many options for each element. I hate to, I don't want to attack them right here. I just want to help critique them. So for example, we have the text. We also have, uh, we have an option here, an option here. We have link, elements, background, loop, order, admin label. I mean, if you look at Elementor over here, they only have one option, maybe two, right? Text and link. And then over here, you have the style and the advanced. I don't really think they need to add so many options. I mean, are you really going to loop these elements? If not, they should really put this more in the advanced section or maybe in the design because I am never going to loop elements and I'm never going to put an order. I'm never going to put an admin label. So I think they should move these around to maybe the advanced section. So anyways, if you want to actually change the elements, all you got to do is put in something like, you know, welcome to your new websites okay now to add an element all you got to do over here is click on the plus there we go plus and then here we can just throw in some text okay and if i click on this on the right side we can go ahead and adjust the text very simple right now for each element let's go ahead and go through this we have three different tabs very similar to elementor we have the content tab this controls the actual content of the elements we have the design tab where we have uh, layouts now, this actually offers the Flexbox, and we'll talk more about the Flexbox in just a little bit. Also, we have the Advanced, where we have conditions, interactions, and the Advanced options. So let's go ahead and just keep adding in elements. Now, one thing also I do want to critique here is that uh, you'll notice that for this element, we have the plus, but if we scroll down, we now lose that plus. And if we actually click away and hover over it, the plus has now moved over here instead of the bottom. Now that's not that big of a deal, but I think users might not want that, right? You might want a consistent uh, add module once you're building a page. So here I will go ahead and click on the plus and throw in a button. All right. Now, one thing I do want to say here is that they do have this option over here called X-Ray, which will actually show you these little bars, which shows you how much space each element's taking, which is pretty cool. Uh, also, you can turn that on and off, which I thought was quite nice. Now, on the right side, I'll just throw in an image. So here, add new module, throw in an image, okay? And we will just go ahead and throw in something here. All right, so I'll put in this image here, and there we go. Now, at first glance, I would say this builder is a lot more snappier than it used to be. So this is a very fast, fluid builder. So next, let's go ahead and talk about the Flexbox. Now, if you're using Elementor right now, there's a good chance you've used the Flexbox. Divi also offers their own Flexbox. So I'm gonna walk you through the Flexbox and give you my personal take on it. So let's go ahead now and insert a new row. So over here, I'll click on plus and click on two columns. Now, if you're using Elementor, you're used to the Flexbox being in all the columns. So it'd usually be in this one and this one. However, Divi went a different approach. So over here, you'll see with Elementor, when you have two columns, the Flexbox works in both columns. However, up here, you'll also see you have the option to edit the container. Now, Elegant Themes right here, you'll see has the same options in the row. So this right here is controlling 
all of the elements inside of the row. If you want to add in flex boxes into each individual column, over here you'll click on plus and click on group. So think of group as the actual flex box. Now, there's one other thing that I want to critique here as well. Notice how I clicked on group and then that pop up just pop back up. Now, my first initial thought here was it didn't work. So, okay, I'll just do it again, right? but it just keeps coming. Okay, what's what's going on here? So I don't really know why this is happening. And again, I can't see what I'm working with because it's blocking the screen. So I'm gonna close this and show you something. So over here we have wireframe mode. Now wireframe mode essentially shows your website in wireframe mode. So it just shows you the elements. Now here you can see that there is a lot of groups that we added. However, at first glance, when I saw that, my first impression was that there was some sort of bug because that pop-up just popped up again. So here I have a bunch of groups that I added and I didn't even know. So yeah, and I can't really see it because, well, it's it, the screen's blocking it. So anyways, so not to be overcritical here, let's say you wanna add in like an element, right? So here, click on the plus, we will throw in a heading, okay? And then over here, I have a new option now. So here we have add a new row and also add a new group or row. Now at first glance, again, this can be very confusing for first time users because how am I supposed to know the difference between this? Like as a first time user. Now, just to give you an example, I'll just go ahead and walk you through this. So over here, I'll put in a button, there we go. And over here, I'll just go ahead and press that plus, and I will just throw in an audio module, right? Now, if we look at the actual wireframe mode, you're gonna see that the audio is actually outside of the flux box now. So uh, that can lead to confusion for first time users. I'm not sure how Elegant Themes would approach that, but I just don't like the idea of users are gonna have to sort of guess you know, what's going on here. Now, if you wanna add another element inside of this flex box, you're gonna notice here that there is no option. You have to scroll over on the element and click on the plus in order to do that. So I felt like that is just like, it's a lot to remember. You know, It's like, I'm trying to get into the brain of the developer here, but it's hard because they keep shifting options and they don't make it consistent. So uh, if I go over here and check out the wireframe mode, you'll now see that all the elements are inside of the flex box. All right, so maybe that's something to work on. So anyways, if you want to use the flex box on this specific section right here, you're gonna have to use the group settings. So over here under group settings, if we go to the design tab and right here, you'll see we have option for the flex box. You'll now see that we can shift around the elements. So when I first used this, I was a little confused because I was actually using it for the row and I'm like, what the hell? Nothing's working, dude. You know, and it was kind of my bad. I, I should have spent more time with the actual builder. So if you want to add another flex box to this column, all you got to do is just click on the group. And yeah, I, that, that's going to be really annoying for a lot of users. I don't know about you guys, but I don't like the idea of a, a pop-up hitting me back up when I clicked on an element, you know? So I'll close that. And then we can go ahead and add an elements here. So I'll just go ahead and click on the plus and then throw in some images. Let's do some images this time. All right, duplicates. All right, so here I'll adjust this. And then let's select another one. So I'm going to add a new row, image. And this time we will select that beautiful woman. Here we go, we'll select this beautiful AI woman, upload an image. All right, now one thing also I wanna address here is that uh, you're gonna see that I found a glitch already. So uh, the elements are moved off the screen. Now, if you go over here to wireframe mode, <laughs> you're gonna see they're still there. So I think they have some things to work on because I wanted to use the flex box on this side, but I just don't think they're ready for a stable release just yet. Well, besides that, I would say it is still quite simple to build a website with Divi. If you're looking for an elements or alternative, I do think Divi is on the way to becoming a great page builder. But here's my initial impression so far. So after using the Divi 5.8 page builder for a while, I got some mixed feelings. The performance has definitely improved. It's more stable and fast, but I'm not a big fan of how many pop-up windows still appear when you're editing. It breaks the flow and feels cluttered. Some of the editing panels overlap each other while you're building the websites, just like the old visual builder, which makes it harder to see when you're actually working on it. The new Flexbox controls are powerful, but they could be a bit confusing at first, especially if you're coming from builders like Elementor or Bricks, where layout options are more straightforward. I also think the elements panel could be better organized. Right now, everything is listed alphabetically, but it would make more sense if the most used modules appeared first for factor access. Also, I would like the option to move the element screen so you can see what you're building. And I would love to see an element bar docked to the right side of the screen instead of having to constantly open and close pop-ups. 
So lastly, let's talk about price. Now, I think this is where Divi actually shines. Now, over here, I'm going to go to the pricing option and scroll down. Now, the thing about Divi is they offer a yearly, but they also offer a lifetime plan, and their lifetime plan is actually really affordable. Now, Divi on average costs about $90 a year. However, if we go over here to the lifetime, you'll pay a one-time payment of $249, and you can put this on unlimited websites. So that is probably the best deal in the entire industry. Now, if you go over here to something like Elementor and compare the plans, obviously, uh, this costs about $200 a year. However, keep in mind that this is not unlimited and also you have to pay this every single year. So if you are on a budget and you are looking for a page builder where you just pay once and you can use it forever on unlimited websites, Dibby is the theme to go with. So party people, that is my review on the Divi theme. Now I'm actually quite excited that Divi's coming out. I do get tired of talking only about Elementor all the time. I do want to talk about other builders that are actually worth it. And obviously Gutenberg's not, but I think Elegant Themes is definitely on the right track. I will be having a tutorial on this WordPress theme coming out very soon. So if you are interested in that, I will put that in the video description. My name is Gerald Wilson and I will see all of you party people later.